Okay, we're back. <clears throat> this would be the start of part 10. Uh, i got to show you something here. If you remember, in one of the first couple of videos, I said I had a couple of parts that were warped. Well, here's the result of it. This little part here has been giving me a fit. You remember I had to cut that pin in the center there? Remember I had, when I tried to fit it up, it wouldn't work, so I had to cut that pin. Well, I was getting ready to glue this all together so I can start primering. And I was looking at it, and this center section here, those are two of those parts that I said were warped in the beginning. And I was looking at it, and boy, they were way off. It, they, they curved way in. I mean, I wouldn't say way in, but it was noticeable with the eye. So what I've done here, now, I don't suggest this to anybody unless you've got some nerve, okay? But uh, I, one guy said, yeah, you can use a hair dryer or something with some heat to soften up the plastic to bend it back. Well, what I've done was took my trusty, handy-dandy butane lighter, and like I said, don't do this unless you've got some nerve you'll melt that plastic in a minute and I kind of just turned it on and held it away and went around it kept going around it at a distance because this will put out some heat and uh, heated this up around in this area and around in this area and you can see I got two clamps on it trying to pull it back all right now that looks a hundred percent better I mean it, it, it had a definite bow in it so I'm going to let this sit for quite a while and cool down, keep this pressure on it, and see if they'll stay in that position. Now, they are underneath, you know, the, the pylons that go out to the shuttle bay. Uh, unless somebody goes turning the model upside down or whatever, you're not going to notice it. But you can see what I had to do to it, trying to get this back. It looks a lot better. It's almost where it should be. So hopefully when this cools down pretty much, uh, they'll spring back into shape. But, uh, like I said, be careful with this because you will melt that plastic in a heartbeat. Hold it, uh, hold it away quite a distance. I think I was holding it about, oh, about like this. Okay? And just going around that area. Just keep it moving. Don't hold it in one spot. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. And it should soften it up enough and put some pressure on it and should pull it back. So I'm hoping that comes out all right. Because I want to get some of these together, parts together, so I can start primering and get this thing ready. All my lights done. It's just a matter of trying to get pieces together now. Okay, there'll be more coming. But I just wanted to throw that in there for you. Alright, uh, here's that part. Got it all primered up, glued together, and I want to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Okay. Let me see if I can get it to the right angle and square with the camera. But that is still got a little bit of a bow in it. And it's not much. If you can't see it, then it's not going to be noticeable. But I can see it sitting here with my human eye but like I said it's underneath and I don't think anybody's going to notice it but it still has a little bit of a bow to it it's it's curving in this way okay I don't know if it's showing up or not it's more so on one side than the other this, this side here is pretty straight this one here is still a little bowed not much I mean anybody look at pick it up and look at it wouldn't notice it but I notice it. All right, and uh, I didn't primer them ends there naturally because that's where it's going to get glued together. Okay, so I got the whole center section now all primered. And you're probably asking why didn't I just primer the whole thing all at one time? Well, here's why. See, I could do the head, get that all primered, and let it dry and check for light leaks and that 
and then while this is setting up for about a day or two then I can work on another section alright so then I've worked on the center section got my lights in it and all that okay then I primer that up and let that set for a day or two and then I come along and now getting ready to uh, do some work on the uh, on the rear section the engine section let me put some of this away and, uh, and my shuttle bays now this one here is going to be a little tough to primer because I got nowhere to to hold on to this thing so I'm probably going to have to primer half of it and let it dry and then come back and do the other half because I got really nowhere to hold this that it doesn't have to be primed so uh, and this little blue tape on here is where the uh, struts come down and glue on there so I wanted to keep them pretty clean and not get them covered up with primer because I'm going to have to glue that parts together and that's the entrance to the shuttle bay there that's all lit up alright so I got both of them done now this is my engine section you're probably wanting to know what the heck am I doing here okay well first off I got the engine section in uh, where the lights are and all that and I stuffed some uh, paper towels down in here so I don't get no paint down in there on that uh, photo etch and stuff alright the reason I got this all wrapped up is I don't want primer all over it right now I'm concentrating on these two center sections right here there's a small opening I thought that was going to get covered up with something else it does not and there's a small opening there if you can see how small that opening is on both sides I have got to get primer down in there now I thought about maybe taking a paintbrush and sitting here and trying to get it down in there I'm gonna shoot it with primer first because there's a lot of light leak in there and that's where the two halves come together and you really you know I had it light blocked from behind but there's a lot of light coming through in that section there so I'm gonna take my primer and I'm gonna really concentrate on getting a lot of paint down in there and that's why I don't want to get no primer on the rest of it because I'm going to be hitting it pretty heavy and I don't want to lose none of this detail on the rest of the body so I just took a few minutes covered it all up and I'm going to really try and hit that try and get that spray down in there I'm going to really have to hit it good and I don't care what it looks like you're not going to, I can't even see down in there hardly but I got to get that light to stop coming through there so that's why this thing is all bundled up and ready to go then once I get that done it sets for about a day or so I'll unwrap it and do the rest of it get it all primer uh, I want to show you something here they had this uh, they give you a metal rod that comes with the kit okay for the stand and it goes in here like this alright supposed to hold your stand up well I have to run my wires down through there so this is out so I went over to the uh, Lowe's and I went into the lighting department and I thought well I'll get one of them uh, brass tubes that they use for making lights because when I was in the Cub Scout some 90 years ago you used to make your own little lamps and they had a brass tube that you know you could run wires through it and I was looking for maybe three eighths. I didn't want to go too big, maybe a half inch at the most. They don't have it. All they got is a, a solid threaded rod. Well, it's not solid, it's hollow, but it's a threaded rod. And I didn't want a threaded rod. So I got to looking at some of the stuff I got, and I got some brass tube, okay? And I think this is, let me see what this is, 732nd, a 732nd, and that fit right in that same hole, okay? And I can run it on through, all right? See that? Runs on through. All right, but I was a little leery about this. This doesn't, I mean, it's hard to bend. You'd be playing hell trying to bend it, but I am still wanted a little bit something sturdier. Well, I also had some quarter-inch brass tube. 
and this 732nd here will fit right inside of that quarter inch. Alright, so I can bring it right up to the bottom of the ship. Now I've got some real strength there. Now I'm going to probably cut it off around here somewhere. It ain't going to be this long. But I was just messing around and seeing what I got. Alright, I might even open this hole up just a little bit to get this second rod into this hole here a little bit. I've I, I got the feeling I should get this in there a little bit. So I'll probably do that. Just open that up a hair so that this other rod can go up in here just a little bit. But I think that'll give me plenty of strength right there. Alright. Then that way I can run my wires down through there. I still haven't got my base yet. I don't know what I'm doing for that. Got some ideas, but I got to have something that's open up on the bottom because I changed my mind. I'm not going to do a 9 volt battery. I was looking on the internet and reading 9 volt batteries don't seem to have a very long life when you're running a bunch of lights like this for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and get me a power pack, a 9 volt power pack, and uh, just plug it into the wall. I really had thoughts about doing both, wiring it up in such a way, and it wouldn't be hard to do, but wiring it up in such a way that if I'm setting it on a shelf where there's no plug nearby, I could run it off a 9 volt battery, and then if I want to put it somewhere else and I'm close to a plug, I can pull that battery out and run it on a power pack. But I'm definitely going to get me a power pack. I should have ordered it today, but I couldn't because today was tax day and I was busy getting all my stuff sent out. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get on the internet tomorrow and order me a power pack. Get me a 9 volt. So, that's where we're at right now. I was going to go outside and do it, but it's starting to get dark. Uh, two days ago, it was almost 80 degrees out. I woke up this morning and there's about an inch of snow on the ground. I think it's only about 30 something out there right now. So it's a little too cold to go out there and, and do some primer. And I will probably go out and do this though. I'll go out and get this done in that center section. And then probably tomorrow I'll do the, all of this, rest of this all together. Okay. And the, uh, I was doing some test lighting last night. And I had the whole thing together. Had all the lights hooked up, running a test, and everything was still working. Everything was working fine. Alright, so that's the end of this section, I do believe. Oh, I got one more thing. I want to show you something I got here. Uh, this tape. That's this blue tape I'm using on this here. This is what they call fine line. It's made by 3M and I might have mentioned this. I used to use this years ago in, in the body shop in, industry when you were uh, some cars back in them days were two-tone and you wanted a real nice thin line between the two coats of paint this color and this color. You didn't want to build up a heavy line there and this stuff is called fine line. Now it's a little bit different than what I used to use. The stuff I used to use was green. Uh, this says that it's a vinyl. So it's pretty much almost like that 3M stuff I had bought. If you watched any of the earlier videos on my uh, Arizona build where I put that pinstripe around the side of the ship. Uh, Testers has got some stuff and it's like a vinyl. And I think that's what this is, the same type of stuff. But this is tackier. 3M, I'll tell you what, you, can't, you cannot beat 3M products. I don't care what anybody says, that is some of the best products on the market. Tape, paint, anything. But uh, this is a quarter inch, and it's called, it says vinyl tape. When I was in the, uh, I had to go to an auto parts store a, um, where they sell body shop supplies. And I asked him for fine line, and this is what he gave me. And I'll tell you what, it's, it works nice. Boy, I'll tell you, 
it's on there. It beats that Tamiya tape to hell and back. But uh, we're going to give it a shot. It should I should have no problems with it. I, I know I won't have no problems with it. It's 3M. All right. I just wanted to show that to you, though. Uh, spend a couple extra bucks when you've got to get down to the nitty-gritty and do something like this, you know. Uh, I do. You know, that's just the way I am. You know, if I'm going to use a tape, I'm going to use the best there is. Okay, I'm going to cut it short here and uh, get on this section at least and get that primered up so it'll sit and then tomorrow I can do the rest. Well, as you can see, everything is primer. I will tell you this, <clears throat> those little trenches in there, let me get my pointer. Those little trenches in there gave me a fit trying to get in there and light block them. But I got them taken care of on both sides. Got everything primer, ready to go. And only, I made one mistake though. <clears throat> I should have painted my uh, photo etch in there. I don't know if it's showing up, but it's it's brass. But once them lights are lit up, you, you don't notice it. But uh, I should have painted that photo etch before I put it in. My mistake. That's all right. I don't think anybody's going to be looking in there anyway. So, next thing to do is start putting it together. And uh, I'm still going to go with my original plan and epoxy these halves together. I think that's the best way to go. And like I said, this will be the last part going in because i got to get all my wiring into this center section here. And then down through that tube. And then I can put this part on last. That will have to go on with the shuttle bays at one time. That's going to be a little tricky, that part is. Okay. I think that's going to do it for this part. So, uh, looks like maybe one or two more videos to go. Of course, I've said that before and wound up with five more. But I think that's pretty much it. Just putting her together now and then and, and then uh, getting some kind of paint job on it. I haven't decided yet. I know I'm not going to paint it white. I don't like that white. So, you know, once again, I'm, I'm going away from what's original to the ship and trying to make it exact as what the uh, model was. I haven't decided yet, but I'm still looking. But I, I can tell you this, it will not be white. So, you're going to have to stay tuned and see what color I do paint it. That's up, I don't know, I, I still haven't decided yet. Okay, that's it for this one.